Uh, morning, Robin. I've had an awful night. Just couldn't sleep. That's probably the rich food you had. I don't know what it was. You're not the only one. The girls have been complaining too. They say they felt a bit spooked. Oh, come on, let's go and eat. We'd all had dreams, very strange dreams, very uh, troubled, um, haunted dreams, I suppose. I, I usually sleep like a log, and I did not sleep well at all that night. How was the fish? Well, Karen and Sean spent the morning sorting out their paperwork. But we do need 12 aubergines, yeah. mineral water, right. and four bottles of peach juice for the bellinis. Fine. Have you got the receipt for the wine merchants? Damn, I left it in my briefcase. I won't be long. Down in the kitchen, Gastoni, the temporary butler, was with the cook, who'd worked at the palazzo for many years. La falina nera. Oh, ci sono i spiriti, sì, qui, sai qui. Ma cosa stai dicendo, scusa? Ma... È vero, quando ci sono i spiriti, la falina nera viene sempre fuori. I remember walking into the room, the very room that we'd thrown this dinner party in. As I entered the double doors, I just stopped, dead in my tracks. I couldn't quite believe my eyes. This lady was walking towards me, a little grey outline. She took three or four paces, at which point she turned at right angles and disappeared through the wall. <sighs> I don't believe in ghosts. I'd never seen a ghost, and because I could see through this woman's body, and clothing. I assumed that that's what I was looking at. You'll never believe what's just happened. Are you OK? I think I've just seen a ghost. <laughs> You're joking. I, I couldn't believe it. I didn't believe he... I thought he was making it up. And But he wasn't... A, he's not the kind of person to make stories like that up. I said I've seen a ghost. How on earth did you know? La falina nera. La falina nera. She said, a huge black moth has just flown in through the kitchen window. And she said, and every time someone sees a ghost, the moth is seen. Now, at this time in Venice, it, it wasn't the season for moths. The cook then went on to tell us the story of the house, which happened apparently 400 years ago. It was the story of the woman in the dining room portrait. The husband couldn't have any children, so his wife took a lover. And they were found together in the dining room, which would then have been a bedroom. And he chopped off her head. And in his rage, decapitated her with his sword. And that's the story the cook told us. Well, it's only a story. I don't think we should be too concerned. <laughs> it's a nasty one, but not one to give us nightmares. Sean must be overworking. Come on, let's go. I can't wait to see the Doge's Palace. The guests spent the rest of the day taking in the sights of the city, trying to forget the palazzo and its gruesome tale for a few hours. Karen and Sean also went out to stock up on supplies, returning to the Albrizzi later that afternoon. Come and have a look at this. Gastoni led them into the dining room, the scene of the previous night's dinner party, where a strange sight awaited them. It's probably one of the girls having a joke. No one has been in here all day. I am the only one who has been here, I know. There was no way this was an accident. The dragees on the floor was six foot from the bowl that had put them in, and, and there was still some left in the bowl, and the bowl hadn't been tipped on the floor. I began to think about it. Not that there was a ghost, but what had really happened? The guests ate out that night at the famous Harry's Bar in the centre of the city. Well, when we left Harry's Bar, um, <clears throat> the bill was rather extraordinarily high because we'd had truffles, white truffles, which are very expensive, so there was a lot of jo laughing about that. <clears throat> and we took the water taxi across the canal. And as we grew closer and closer to the piazza, we became more and more subdued. We were feeling more and more um, 
sort of quieter and thinking, what does tonight hold for us? To make matters worse, Venice experienced one of its biggest thunderstorms for several years. We had to go running around closing all the windows. Um, the net curtains were billowing into the rooms. Water was running down the inside of the walls. We had to switch all the lights off because they were flickering. So really the whole house was plunged into a semi-darkness. Thank you, Sean. Karen, thank you for waiting up for us. It looks lovely. Actually, it makes you, the house look even more mysterious. Everyone was still talking about the ghost and was it safe for them to stay that evening at the Palazzo? Sean, you do think we'll be all right here on our own? Of course. This place is perfectly safe. We'll be fine. Don't you worry. All right. Good night, then. Good night. Good night. Karen and Sean were staying at a nearby hotel. None of the staff stayed at the Palazzo after dark. Look at that. trick of the light. Well, that's probably what you saw this morning when you saw that ghost. The shadows in here are playing tricks with your eyes. Maybe. Go and get the others. We'll show them this and stop them worrying about everything. Okay. It was quite obvious that it was a trick of the light because as you walked towards the image, it disappeared, faded into the wall. I did this several times just to check. Look at this. You see? It disappears as you get closer to it. Well, I don't like it, and I'm not going up to my bedroom without a torch. Well, don't worry, we'll get you one. I looked up at the painting of the Contessa, and for some strange reason, I felt very sad, a lot of grief. And water started streaming out of my eyes, down my face. Sure. Sure. Oh, sure, let's get out of here. Come on. Yes. It was like that. God, are you all right? They were standing in the doorway, and they both looked very shaken, very white, and Sean had tears rolling down his face. I don't believe it. What now? I'll go and have a look. This place is beginning to fray my nerves. I'll come with you. All I wanted to do was to clear the matter up, sort it out, so the guests could be happy. Um, we were thrilled at being invited to Venice, and we were looking forward to ten days looking after these people. And I, the last thing I wanted was for anything to go wrong. We came into the room, Robin stood there, and I was just here when... Oh, Sean, what's the matter? I felt as if someone was trying to push me into the ground. There was a tremendous pressure on my back. I've never felt anything like it before. It felt like um, I had this ton weight, and I was doubling up with pain because it was really hurting. Uh, I was in quite some agony. Sean was the one that went around scoffing. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in ghosts. Absolutely ridiculous. Oh, so stupid. Nobody at home. How can any of you think about it? But so he, because he seemed to be the, the one that was the most vehement in his disbelief, he was the one that seemed to be the most affected. It's extraordinary. Well, there's nothing here. But when I got to this spot, it was like crossing a line. And it... I felt as if I was walking into a fridge. Karen? Karen, what's going on? I found myself looking at the painting on the wall. In particular, her eyes seemed to look straight through me. I just felt very cut off and very distant, as if hypnotised, almost into a different world. For God's sake, Karen, get away from there! Oh, oh, there's something there! I don't know what it is, but there's definitely something there! Oh, no. 
hard enough. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Oh, please don't, no! Please! Karen's right. Stay away. This time the pressure was three or four times as heavy. My shoulders were being squeezed together so hard that it felt like my blood was bubbling and boiling. No! I really think that Karen thought I was having some sort of heart attack. What's going on in here? Oh, my God! Now, this is a, 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 you know, a very sort of stalwart man in his 40s who looks like he, he could certainly say boo to a goose who has become a sort of gibbering wreck. That's it. That's enough. We're getting out of here. Alice and Caroline, you go to your room together and get your things. Hugo and Robin, you do the same. Where are we going to go? It's one o'clock in the morning. We'll think about that later. The priority is to get out of here. Come on, when Lady Bamford had made the decision to leave, I was relieved and I couldn't wait to get out of the plateau. By this time, the two teenage girls were very, very frightened and they were shaking. Um, and so I was also frightened. But I remember my parents and grown-ups during the Blitz um, making me, as a little tiny girl, less frightened by singing. So I thought, I'll sing. I'm a performer. I can sing. Who would believe this? We've been forced out of this beautiful palace in the middle of the night. Well, thank goodness we're all in one piece. Yeah, yeah. I see trees of green, red roses too. Joan was brilliant, really, and she was keeping everyone in a, in a good mood. And she even started singing songs um, to, t to take her minds off what had just happened. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. <laughs> we all found this quite amusing sort of two o'clock in the morning. But if it wasn't for Joan, I think it would have really been a sort of a state of panic. Hugo and Robin had yet to join the group. Did you hear that? <sighs> Let's get out of here. Knives only quiver right after they've been thrown. You know, you cannot get a knife to quiver other than that. And um, they were quite stunned. Are you all right? Oh, never mind. I'll tell you about it later. Let's just go. The Venetian holiday was over after just two nights. The next morning, Gastoni, knowing nothing of the previous night's events, arrived to start work. I wouldn't bother with that, Gastoni. There's no one here. I, I don't understand. We were driven out of here last night. Well, something, ghosts, whatever, frightened us half to death. The next so morning, I had to go back to the Palazzo to pack the suitcases for the guests so because the night we before we'd left in such a hurry. It was terrible. Incredible. More incredible still were the secrets that the cook told Karen and Gastoni. It was apparently not the first time that guests had been driven from the palazzo by fear. And that day, the cook told us a story about a gentleman who was staying at the palazzo ten years ago. We'd woken up in the middle of the night, three o'clock in the morning, praying in front of the picture. He was so frightened and so shocked by this experience that the next day he packed up all his luggage <laughs> and left straight away. She then made an extraordinary request. The cook then suggested to me that all the guests should come back and say sorry to the painting. The atmosphere was very still and very quiet. 
Mi dispiace. And one by one, everyone walked up to the painting. Mi dispiace. It was almost like taking communion to it. I'm an actor, so I'm very superstitious. So I went and I said, uh, I'm sorry to the painter, to the painting, to the woman. I'm sorry, Contessa, whatever it was that we did to offend you. Apparently what we did to offend her was that we, we ate in her dining room, which is her domain, and nobody ever goes in there. Mi dispiace. Nella mia carriera, è molto lunga. In my long career, 45 years working in hotels and restaurants with all the greatest screen personalities, I have to say I have never had to say sorry to a ghost as if it were some kind of pilgrimage before. If I wrote this in a novel, do you think anyone would believe me? Not in a million years. <laughs> there were too many different things that had been happening in the... Uh, almost 48 hours that we'd been there to say, uh, oh, well, this is just our imagination. Inspired by her Venetian adventure, Joan Collins began writing a book. Part of the story is set in Venice. In a small cobbled piazza where the trees grew even taller than the narrow houses stood the decaying Palazzo Albrizzi. She'd heard the rumors that the palazzo was haunted by a beautiful contessa, decapitated by her husband in a fit of jealous rage 400 years earlier. It was an experience that um, has certainly stayed with me. It's not something that has um, blurred with time. I wouldn't go back to the palazzo again. No, definitely not. The experience left an imprint on the lives of everyone on the trip. For Joan Collins, it proved to be the source of inspiration for her work. Karen and Sean, however, were so seriously affected by what happened that they turned to the church for help. It was only after they received a blessing from their vicar that they say the nightmares receded. Good night. Sybil is next over in 4. Stay with us here on UTV for the thrilling conclusion to Savannah after a news update. <laughs>